So hallelujah, everyone who's watching this broadcast and Global Revival Church members, let God's great grace and blessing be upon you. So let God's spiritual change appear in you, in you and let God's grace become real in your life. Let his word be, come to life and work in your life. So I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, before we talk about today's word, so the grandma is going to give a very important testimony. So uh, she's going to give a testimony of what happened. So from the beginning. So testimony of what happened at Evergreen. So there was someone who had leg pain. Then she asked her. She said now her leg is all healed after. So she prayed for that person who had leg pain for three times. So before the pain was above the knee, but then the first time you pray, it went below the knee, the pain. And then she couldn't meet her for a while. And then she prayed for her one more time. And then yesterday she went to go pray for her again. But the other grandma said to her, Oh, I'm all healed. My leg doesn't hurt anymore. Everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. So God's power and authority doesn't does it matter how old you are or not? Do you know how old she is? She's ninety years old. But as she heard, she just did it by faith, just with a pure motive, like a child. She went and you know applied what she learned. So these kind of signs, wonders, and miracles followed. So it's important, man. It's very important about how you hear His word and how you accept His word. So these days we hear a lot of voices, we hear a lot of information and other stuff all around the world. Even in First Corinthians, said there's a lot of sound. There's a there's no meaningless sound or words. But what kind of influence do those words, sounds, you know, influence? How how does it influence us? Which is the truth? Which is not the truth? We have to discern. So today's topic is His voice. So His voice. The, rather than the Father God's voice, we made a little gentler, His voice. So from His voice, so before people were, we were corrupted, how many different voices were in the Garden of Eden before corruption? So it's very easy. We just have to read it. So we just have to read the Bible. Genesis chapter 3. So let's read from verse 15 to the end. Genesis 3, verse 15 to the end. Uh, wait. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pl pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, Adam he said, because you listened to your wife, Chapter two, chapter two. Anyway, chapter two, fifteen to the end. And verse 24 and verse 25. So just chapter 2. So before corruption in chapter 2, 
So in the Garden of Eden, how many voices were there? So, so who are the three voices? God. So God is one. Adam. Eve is silent. Eve never said anything in chapter 2. So in the Garden of Eden, before corruption, there was, it was very clear, the voices were clear, there was no lie. There was no confusion. It was very clear from who? From Father's God to Adam. So he told him his calling. So don't eat the tree from the center of the garden. If you eat it, you will die. And because it's not good for him to live by himself, I'm going to give you a woman. And in order for you to need to feel the need, so he made all the beasts walk before him, and then he had to name all of the beasts in the garden, and that would become the animal's name. It was very creative. You know, there was probably a lot of animals, but he was able to name all of them. And then Adam, to his wife Eve, so you're, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So who made the word woman? Adam did. God said female, but Adam said woman. So Adam used that word. So until here, there was no problems. So they heard the voice. They understood the voice. And then there was no issues with them living in that situation. But the problem started in chapter 3. Okay, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the, serp then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So stop here. So suddenly the serpent, the devil, Satan appears and went to Eve and asked her, did, did God really say you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And then Eve's answer wasn't clear. One A word changed. So you shall not eat it, you shall certainly die. So it's just said to might. So it says you might, but you know, it said you shall not. So he she changed the word. So what is Eve's position? She's supposed to be the helper. The helper of what? What Adam is doing? What is Adam doing? He's keeping the garden. He's building and protecting the garden. So the enemy is here. So a weird animal appeared. So Eve didn't do her job. She did. You know, God created women to be spiritually sensitive, but she didn't respond. And in her own curiosity, she wasn't supposed to mix the words, but she mixed the words together. So she changed, you shall not eat it to you, we might not die. You know, she changed the word. So then in these end times, your judgment will start to be more confused, a little bit unclear. So then she didn't say it clearly what the clear instruction was. So the serpent didn't lose this chance and then lied to her and made her eat the fruit. So as soon as you accept the lie, so usually... So, so the tree that you you knew that Eve knew that you weren't supposed to go near it, you weren't supposed to eat from it, but she looked at the tree and it seemed pleasant to eat and to look at. So, depending on what kind of thought came into you, it changes your perspective on how you see things. So you have to think about it. So based on what you hear, what these. So based on your choice on what you will hear or not hear, your perspective will change. So the your influence of your life will change. So then, if you hear a lie, what kind of person will you become? So the Satan's real identity is a liar. So then you'll become a friend to the d Satan devil. You're going to be confused. You're going to become a liar. So you'll be filled with confusion and lies. As soon as you accept that lie, then your life will change. Another thing. So from here, Eve is a different uh, Eve. Distorted, corrupted Eve. So then she told who to eat the fruit? She went to Adam to tell him to eat the fruit too. 
So how many more voices were here? So there was God's voice, and then Adam's voice, and another voice that was added. The serpent, devil, Satan's voice, and then one more. The other's voice, so another's voice, so the voice that even Adam talked with. So they were already corrupted, that voice, already been defiled. And then they accepted this, so then both of them together got defiled with a different th thought. And then what appeared at this moment? God's voice. They heard, they hid from God's voice. So they, they be, were used to be intimate with God, but now they're far away. So if you hear a voice, certain things make you afraid. Certain voices make you feel free. Certain voices make you have happy, but some voices make you go into the darkness. So in the voice in the garden was defiled to them. So which voice is the truth among the four? Only which voice is the truth? If we read all of chapter 3, who gave you what this to eat, this fruit to eat? So if Adam, Adam originally said, my bone bones, bone, flesh of my flesh, you know, she would have said that, you know, she's such a precious one. That's what he would have said if he wasn't corrupted. But he said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree. So then he was already defiled and corrupted. So based on what you allow, your thinking will change. So in your daily life, you'll hear a lot of things every day. So based on that sound, that voice, if you don't discern it, if you don't filter what you hear, then in your life, you don't know what kind of defilement, what kind of problems is going to start to occur. Even right now in your life, you're going to hear a lot of voices. Especially these days, rather than people and people, it's between your internet and the device. Or animal and people. Some people even say that the dog is their son or daughter. When did he ever create us as a dog's father or mom? But that's what many people say. So they say it like that. So what is this saying? Later on, the animals, the beasts, when they appear in the Bible, that means you have a relationship with the beast or animal. So the words that, these words that defile your thinking pattern are coming out of your mouth. So in those areas, if you don't speak the truth, then you're going to be defiled. You're gonna become that. You're gonna become a corrupted individual. So who's the voice that never changes? So other voices give you a hard time, gets you confused, chaotic, and messes you up. But God's voice, Jesus' voice, and the Holy Spirit's voice will lead you to the truth. So then, I challenge the Gen Z. A lot of internet, media, phone, device, or all your social media, you receive a lot of information through all of that. So whether that's the truth or not, so without the knowledge of God, if it matches your heart, if it makes you happy or gives you joy, without any filtering, if you don't discern, if you receive all the information you hear from your phone or social media, it's easier for the Satan to control your life. So how do you hear God's word? What is truly God's word? Unless you learn the most foundation things for your life, then in your generation, even right now, we're going to get um, stepped on and stomped on. Even right now, all around the world, with propaganda, they're spreading out lies, advertisement. They're all spreading all the lies. Those who accept, as soon as you accept and say yes, and you fall into their trap, their lies, then you become a slave to that word, to that lie. And the behind the spirit is the Satan. So you don't even know that you're a slave. And there's many people who just live by those words, especially even those who are called Christians. But those Christians, based on God's voice, on his words, they don't pay attention. That's the same as the Church of Laodigea. They cannot see who they really are, how their life is really is, and they're just saying, oh yeah, we're fine. So it's the same as the Noah's time or Sodom and Gomorrah time, and then suddenly they're going to perish. Okay? 
So I say it again. So in the Garden of Eden, before they were kicked out, how many voices were there? There were four voices. The first one, God's voice. Second, before corruption, Adam and Eve's voice. So what Adam said before corruption. The third one, Satan's voice. The fourth one, after corruption, the what they said between each other. People said between each other. So the voice that's around us the most is the last one, like after corruption voice. Except for one, the other three voices are all corrupted and defiled, and all those voices bring you chaos and confusion, and they control you. And the other three give you worry and anxiety, and make you, yeah, have worries. So only God's voice can keep you secure and can give you internal life, and only His voice is the truth. So in the midst of all these voices that are mixed together, even what, is God still speaking to us? So before corruption, it was probably easier to hear God's voice. But after corruption, right now in this world, unless you deal with your heart and clean up your heart, and you don't know the way that God talks to you, and you don't know to discern the truth or not, if you don't know, if you don't respond in the word correctly, then you're gonna be deceived. And whether you know it or not, you're going to become a slave to those voices and words. You're already going to be dragged by it. So regarding finance, regarding what you eat, regarding things of this world, if you cannot learn self-control, when the Antichrist comes and on your forehead, when you put the 666 on your head, you're all going to just fall for it. So God's supernatural provision, if you don't believe that He will supernatural, supernaturally provide for you because of the desire in you to live, eat, you're not you're going to do anything possible, okay? So that's the, fir the first truth. God still speaks. God still speaks. So Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness. So then verse 7, let's go back to verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice. So now, he likes this word, now, today, if you will hear his voice. That means, today. That means today God still speaks to us. But based on your heart's condition, that you can choose to listen or not to listen to His voice. If you're senseless, if your heart is hardened, then you're not going to listen to His voice. You're going to rebel. Okay? So next, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. So it says, it's, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So look at the word proceeds. So every word that proceeds from the mouth, that's what they should live by. So that means he continuously keeps talking to us. The words keep coming from his mouth. So it's not just any time you, know, you get tempted or something. Even now, today, God continuously speaks to us. Every day, do you agree? Then, do you want to hear his word, his voice? Do you really want to hear his word and voice? So then Acts chapter 22, Acts 22, verse 14 to 15. Then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. For you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. So when they call, when he called Paul, this is the word that he gave to Paul. So to know his will, and you will see the just one, and hear the voice of his mouth. Know his will, see the just one, and hear the voice of his mouth. And you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. So you have you all received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do you guys all do speaking tongue? So if the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll receive authority. And in the Judea and Samaria, we are going to become his witnesses in all of nations. So those who are born again, so my sheep hear my voice, and I know him, and they follow me. That's what it says in John 10, 27. 
So according to that word, those who are born again can hear God's voice. Especially those who are baptized in speaking, and those who can do speaking tongue, you will see here and you will know His will so that you can live a life of being His witness. If God doesn't let you see or hear, He's not going to make you be His witness if you cannot see and hear. That means your life itself, you have to want to, want to hear His voice, want to see Him. Yet when you have that heart, in this king, you can come into His kingdom and you can see His kingdom. So you have to believe in your position of being born again. And when you seek Him, then you can see, hear, and know His will. Okay? So more importantly, so you hear... You, you hear, but you live according to your way, then do you think God will bless you? If you hear His voice, but you live according to your own way, so then James one twenty two. James one twenty two. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. So you hear his word, but you live according to your own way, then it could be worse than not listening to his word. So Jonah heard God's voice, but it didn't match his preferences. So he didn't go to Nineveh. He went to Tarsus, and then he got eaten by the big fish. And then for three nights, he was repenting, and then he was spit out in the land of Nineveh. So think about the people of Nineveh. They heard the rumor that he was spit out onto the, you know, the land from the. But he had seaweed on his head. He was probably smelly from being in the fish. When he suddenly said, said, "Repent! If you do not repent, you're gonna perish by God's hand." You know, they heard that word from his voice. So the Bible says clearly, when you. So what's more important than hearing his voice or not? It's you have to hear his voice and obey too, so that the blessing can come to you. So you have to hear and obey. So not so if you only hear and do not obey, then you know what your head that you know. But if your life doesn't follow, then everything that God promised you, it won't come down as a blessing to you. So in Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse one to two. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And if you go all the way down to verse 14, you know, you'll get blessed no matter what you do, even if you leave, if you come back, even if you go to your enemy you know they're going to run away you know he's going to give you so many blessings that you give to others you're always going to be the first the head not the tail so those kind of blessings are going to come to you but what is the key word to get all those blessings so first of all you have to hear his voice and if based on what you hear if you diligently obey the voice then this word will uh, activate okay so if you just hear in one ear and based on the situation or circumstance if you change it or if you don't listen to his voice, then you deceive yourselves. That's what it says in James 1.22. So if you deceive yourselves, that means you're becoming a friend with the devil. You're a partner with the devil because you're deceiving yourself. So you have to understand this picture. So based on God's word, so when you just obey his word, it doesn't matter your age or not. Like when the grandma went and prayed by the faith, her faith in the name of Jesus, you know, the disease left. So, do you know how weak, you know, the elderly's leg, arm, bones is all sore and weak, but you know, she said, I was all healed. You know, grandma usually don't come and say, oh, I've been healed. She said, I'm healed because it doesn't hurt. For, like, 100% doesn't hurt. Right? It's not that we had some kind of power, but according to His word, when you listen and you obey, then the blessings that God promised us is being released. So in our grandma's life, she prayed for someone, 
and God's power, Jesus' power came through her, and that she was able to experience the disease being healed, the pain being healed. Many people say they believe in Jesus, but there's many Christians who never even got to experience this yet. So God's word still works today. So first of all, so God still speaks today. Second of all, God's voice. So God's voice is consistent. So it's continuous. It's eternal. It never stops. It doesn't end. Okay. So God's voice doesn't end. It's consistent. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Hebrews thirteen eight, so. God in the Old Testament and the New Testament is the same. God who spoke yesterday will speak to us today. But the problem is, if you choose to listen, are you giving? Have you chosen to listen and give your heart to Him? That's the difference. Okay, so you have to listen and give your heart to Him. So God consist consistently speaks. He's not one that just disregards it. He doesn't give you up and say, oh, "I cannot help you." He doesn't say that. So listening to his voice doesn't matter about your education. It doesn't matter about your IQ. It's if your heart honors him and you want to hear his voice. Then even today he speaks to us. When he speaks to us, you have to deal with your heart and just you don't reject his voice, his word. Then he will keep speaking to you. And no matter what situation, if you ask him, if you wait for his answer. He will speak to you.、Um, hallelujah. So the solution is where it's in you. He's in you, but you keep looking for it other in other places. That's why it doesn't match up. So Satan's watching your life, and he's watching the words that come out of your mouth. Is to check if you really know the truth or not, and if you don't know the truth, then just like he deceived Eve, he's gonna say something. He's gonna make you hear another lie, and you'll easily just follow that lie. If you want to eat something, you just don't. You can only. If you want to eat something, wherever you go, you'll see restaurants. If you go to the mall, if you, if there's a certain fashion or clothes that you want, you've been wanting to wear, then no matter where you go, you're gonna only see that type of clothes because you want that. So what's in your heart will be all exposed. So don't be afraid of this. And hear the voice of the one who speaks the truth. He so believe in what he consistently tells us, speaks to us. Another important thing is God's voice is in accordance to His will. His The what's written in the Bible, it's in accordance with God's will. So anything that's not in accordance to God's will or in the Bible is not His voice. Yeah, God's voice is in accordance with God's will. So one person had a family problem. So she went to someone who could hear God's voice and had.、Uh, what? So, one gifted. Oh,、uh, so this person who had a family. Yeah, one woman come, and the woman is is the problem in the family relationship. Husband and wife is a big issue. Yeah, the same that man. And this man is see the that person. He know. As soon as the gifted person saw that man, he he knew that she, that person had family problems. So what did he say? It's hard, right? So at that word, the other person's heart melted. There was no one that could understand his heart. That's why. So that's where you lose your guard. And then what did that guy say? Oh,、uh, get divorced. Does it say that in the Bible? So God's voice matches one hundred percent with the Bible. It doesn't go away from the Bible. What's written in the Bible? His voice is his nature and character. It matches one hundred percent. It's in accordance with his 
So God's voice is in accordance with His will. It doesn't change. So that's one of the most found basic foundation things. What does it say? Romans twelve two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind, your thinking, your mind has to change so that you will know that He is good, acceptable, and you can prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So if you want to hear His word, so what has to be in your heart as a foundation? So His word. It has to be recorded a lot. A lot of his word has to be recorded in your heart. So you have to experience his word, receive revelation, experience his word. So it has to be inscribed in your heart. So all those words have to be inscribed in you, so that you can easily hear his voice. Why? Because his voice. He speaks using the word. So if you don't know the word, so when you don't know how to write or how to read, how do you teach them? So they, so that's why if kids don't know how to read, then they use picture books to show them stuff. So that's why we get visions and dreams. So when you don't know the word well, he's gonna speak to you using visions or dreams or pictures or symbols. It's easy to deliver. Everything at once through a vision or dream. So in you, you have to have the assurance of His word. That's why the struggle in you isn't bad because there's a lot of trial and testing. Is this kind of word in the Bible? What does the Bible say about this? So you have to ask about that. Then God. Will clearly confirm to you using the word. So God, who's leading this whole world as a whole one family, He could give a message through someone else, or someone might come up and make you understand His word. Or when you ask the leader about something you're questioning, then you know He can release many things to you. So what you must know is when you hear His voice and then. So when you discern those who prophesy using His word, it had the word has to be from the Bible. His those that are not, the words that are not in accordance with God's word in the Bible or His will, you should not agree to those words. So the next one, if you hear God's voice, His word, you have to obey. So that's why hearing God requires faith. So your faith has to follow. So faith comes by hearing. And in Romans ten seventeen, so faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God is Rema. So the word that comes out from His mouth. So in the TPT version, so faith then is birthed in a heart that responds. So the faith grows up in your heart that responds to God's anointed utterance, the anointed one. So those who are anointed, so the words that come out of Jesus's mouth, the one who's anointed one, so the Rama word, so what how your heart responds is faith. So as soon as you hear God's voice, what do you need? So regarding those words, you need faith. So to marry, you're gonna give birth to a son. He's going to be the savior of all nations, so name him Jesus. So then Mary's logic, he has to know a man to give birth, but he has, she never married a man, so she questioned how I can bear a son. So if she wants to have that faith, she has to know God's way. So in her own way, her own logic, it doesn't work. So when she asks God about this, you know, he's going to teach you. So his everlasting his power will cover over you. The Most High's power is going to cover you. So then the Spirit will come cover you. His presence and glory will cover all over you. And then once it covers you, then you can give birth through the Spirit. So then she said, "I agree." 
So by faith. So as soon as she heard this voice, she agreed by faith. That's why it became a reality. So sometimes when God speaks to you, you sometimes you start, when you cannot understand what this means, you can ask again or wait when you don't know what it means. But don't uh, deny it. Don't reject it because that means you're saying, I don't want to do that word. Then your heart will become hardened and you're going to rebel. Then your thinking will keep going in and you're going to compromise. Okay? So there's sometimes you speak of what you're afraid of. And you have to learn how he speaks. How he expresses things. I'm going to come quickly. How many years have passed? It's been over 2,000 years. So how he expresses things. So in heaven, there is no time. There is no concept of time. It's eternal. Just start and the end is all the same. It's only us that lives within this restriction of time. So he said he's going to come quickly. That's right. And all the prophecies that were written in the Bible are happening right now. And according to what he spoke, it's happening. And the prophets that let us know what's going to happen, those who hear God's voice and speaks, and the seers who see what God's doing and then have to deliver. So through those seers and prophets, he's going to give us confirmation and let us know his word. So in 5784, many unexpected, shocking things are going to happen. That's what it's the prophecy said. Already many things are happening. UA, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, earthquake, flood, hail. It's going crazy. Why? But to some countries, God guarantees them. Those who obey His word, you know, God guarantees them by His word. So all those promises, when you listen to his voice and you he obey his voice, it doesn't matter about the situation or circumstance. You're going to be within his protection. You're going to be within his grace. And his promise will be in you. And God's voice brings some kind of result. He will support you. And something will happen. So... His word will tremble, bring trembling, and something will always follow from his word. So, you know, supernatural provision or something will manifest in your life. So, during, among the four voices, for the remaining two, so our voice or the voice between other people, so those kind of voices, do those voices always give you some kind of support or make something supernaturally provide for you? Those voices cannot do anything supernaturally for you. There's only one. The devil could do something supernaturally, but the supernatural things that the devil does, it's to d destroy or perish or to control your life or to put you within all those worry and anxiety or to make you afraid. So, so doubt, fight, argument, you know, that's how he moves, Satan moves. So only who? Only Father God. Only his voice. Only his word. Supernaturally can provide for us. So in tribulation or some kind of famine came, you know, the widow didn't have to worry for three years and six months. The, she was another lady you know she got back all of her positions when she was away and the famine's gonna come and everything is gonna many things are gonna come to us but you have no reason to be afraid in God's supernatural way he's gonna provide us if you believe in that say amen so believe in his promise believe in his word and obey his voice, his word. Don't try to plan in your own way. So from now on, you have to learn more about God. You have to learn about God's financial way so that when the world shakes, you won't compromise, you won't worry, and you can become abundant. There's going to be a lot of hardships. There's going to be times of 
abundance, and there's going to be times of provision, abundance, and times of famine, and you know, lack, like Joseph's time. But those who have that thinking and prepare in advance, you can be someone that helps others in those times. Those who have the spirit of Joseph, those who have the spirit of Isaac, they know how to prepare for this season, this time. David and Dan, those who have the spirit of David or Daniel, that you wouldn't be afraid of how the world's going to go. You're going to build up God's kingdom according to His word. So, whose voice do you want to hear? And in John chapter ten, verse four, and it says, when Jesus brings out His own sheep, His own sheep, He goes before them, and He stays within the still voice, and He's going to. Close you. He's gonna feed you. That means he's gonna provide for you, and he's gonna let you know what he's doing in the supernatural, and how can the heaven's power, the kingdom's power, come down to this earth through those who obey? He's gonna prepare your life. Okay. So I hope you guys can hear his voice. So all of Satan's voice is only going to give you trouble in your life. It's going to make you perish. So the most important thing in this chaotic world, what did God prepare? God's voice, His word, is a still small voice. He's going to speak to you in a still small voice. Why many people cannot hear His voice? Is because you want to hear his voice very loudly because it looks cool. But in the Bible, there's it's rare for you to hear his voice very loudly. Like Moses, you know, he was walking around in the wilderness for forty years. He had nowhere to go, so he gave up everything. That's why God was able to speak speak strongly to Moses in an audible voice. So he doesn't call just one time. So when you give your heart to Him and you start to develop your heart towards Him, you can even hear His uh, whispers. You already know. You already know what God wants to do. And when you follow that way, then something will happen. Why? Because He spoke, so it will be fulfilled. So let's go. So God's voice versus Satan's voice. So this chart. So God's voice versus Satan's voice. So God's voice. It's not abrupt or suddenly. He doesn't give you pressure. It's very calm. It's very comfortable. So God's voice is life and peace. If it keeps giving you pressure or make you. Like feel um, urgent, so that's not God's voice. So then Satan's voice makes you obsess, or makes you worry, or then you feel have the feeling that if I don't do this, I'm gonna die. That's Satan's voice, or it's the desire in you. It's your flesh desire. It's the world speaking. So there are people that are weak to this. If you focus on one thing, if you want to do this one thing, you have to do it, right? And everyone who tries to stop you from doing that one thing, you feel like they're all your enemy, right? So you have to be careful. So unless you match your character with God's character, so God's voice, aligns all of your thinking pattern and everything to His way. So He corrects your character and your thoughts to His thoughts. He aligns everything. So the second one, so God's voice. So what is the Holy Spirit's other name? It's Comforter. So His voice comforts, comf comforts you. What about Satan? He makes you worry, be anxious. He gives you anxiety, makes you worry. So you hear something, but you already feel anxious, and that's not good. You should say no, thank you. So command in the name of Jesus that everything that makes me worry go away, and the Holy Spirit help me. So deal with my heart. So pr pray like that. When you hear something and gives you anxiety, pray like that. So the third one, God doesn't scold you; it convicts you so that you can understand. Oh, what are you doing right now? Why are you here? So wake up. So He convicts you. He doesn't scold you or try to kill you. But Satan, He said, if you don't listen this time, you're gonna die. 
Even Satan says, I'm going to kill you. And he even threatens you. Why? Because before you were his position, but you, when you want to try to leave from Satan's side to God's side, he's going to try to threaten you like that. He's going to condemn you. There was someone in China who had. Uh, so he was doing ministry in China. So that person with an animal had a. Had a relationship with the animal, a sexual relationship with the animal, and he met someone where the devil was inside of him, and he spoke in the name of Jesus. Do you know what he said to him, Pastor Kim? He said, "The one inside of me is preventing me from doing whatever Pastor Kim was telling him to do." So that's what that guy said, because the devil was inside of him. So there was already control. He used to fear. So you shouldn't allow it. You shouldn't leave the gap for Satan. When when the Holy Spirit convicts you, you have to use the power and command, and then use the name of Jesus and ask Him for help. Otherwise, you're gonna live in the battle, and you're just gonna suffer, and it's gonna end. The next one. So the God's voice always encourages you, but Satan discourages you. So the uh, this might. What if this happened? What if this happened? What if that person gets disappointed? What if I get scolded? So all of those what if is from who? That's Satan. So that's not God's voice, okay? And then God's voice enlightens. It makes you understand. You know, it shines a light on the darkness, and it shows you what how you're in the wrong, and it enlightens you to go to the right path. But the Satan. Confuses you. It uh, makes you confused. You think this is right, but also that's right. So Eve, see how Eve got confused in one second. You know, seemed pleasing to the eye and good to eat. So with just one word, she just changed. So you have to clearly discern what you're gonna hear. The next one. So God's voice doesn't push you. He leads you. He goes before you and leads you. He shows an example. That's why, if you want to become a leader in the church, you have to sacrifice many things. You have to do it first. You have to show an example. If you don't do it yourself, there's no and no one else is going to follow you. That's Satan. That's the world. Okay, so Satan pushes you, forces you, and then God's voice reassures you. Always, yeah, reassures you, gives you confirmation again. Even if you made a mistake, he fixes you again. And it gives you confirmation, reassures you again. But Satan always frightens you, gives you fear. Fear threatens you. That's how Satan comes. So God never does that. So all your choices and all your thinking, he he uh uh. I don't know what that means. Uh, respect God respects your choices. He doesn't force you. He doesn't force you, so he makes you. He wants you to willingly choose. But then, when you make a wrong choice, he's gonna teach you. He's gonna show you, and he's gonna enlighten you again, and he's gonna convict you. So that you can understand and come back. So in Luke 15, it says, you know, he didn't stop the son from leaving, the prodigal son from leaving, because so that son has to do what he wants, and then he, when he understands that what he's doing is wrong, then he can come back and know the re- real father's heart. But that doesn't mean you should experience all the evil in the world. That's a real lie that Satan uses. So don't fall for that. So he's talking about the desire in you. So you have to deal with this. But before Pastor Kim, he wanted to teach because he knew if you go that way, you're gonna suffer. It doesn't matter, because even if he does, they don't thank you. And if it doesn't work, then you know he comes all back to him. So he just leaves them to be, and then their hearts are already hardened. Then he just lets them be, and he intercedes with God. Your voice. But your voice, 
speak to them. And God will touch them. And at that moment, and that time, so, so something that he's been telling them for so long, they said, oh, I finally heard this like a moment ago. So it's because you don't listen. That's why you don't obey. And that's why it never happened. And because you don't listen, that's why your life doesn't change. So by yourself, willingly, you have to know that this is God's will. This is God's grace. And then you'll start to listen and you're going to start to want to follow him. But in your life, as Paul Cox said, even if there's revelation, it has to. you have to experience that revelation. It has to be engraved in you so that you that word can truly dwell inside of you. Before that, it's just information. The next one. So God's voice is still. He doesn't rush. So there's a movie called Rush Hour. You just rush and try to put everything on them. So God doesn't do that. He makes, he's always still and he's always at peace. So that's why don't worry, don't be anxious, just thanksgiving and pray and supp- in prayer and supplication. So you have to be still. So when that stillness comes, then you can hear his voice. So rushing, pushing, forcing, all of that is not God's voice. That's what Satan does. So he explains many people that were caught by the devil, who were followed by the devil. There's people who said, if I let go of this paper, I'm going to die. So do you know what it says on the paper? It says a person's address or something. But they believe that if I let go of this paper, I'm going to die. And if you try to take it from them, they start making a scene. They start getting afraid. There's people, someone who jumped from the eighth floor of an apartment. Why do you think they jumped? So God said, so oh, there was a, so you know he believed that God was saying, if I will protect you, so jump. So that's how Satan makes you confused and deceives you. So, God's character, so through your relationship with Him, if you don't know who He is, then you could be deceived by Satan saying, Oh, God will protect you, so jump. So, you're religious, you're religi- you're religious, but you don't know the truth. So, everything you hear, you think it's the Spirit speaking to you or God speaking to you. But there's people who ran in front of a car or someone who jumped off from a high place. In the midst of that, you know, God loves them. Even though he jumped from the eighth floor, only that area where he landed was dirt, so he survived. Only his pelvic was broken and he survived. So that's a miracle too. So what should you do to hear his voice? The first of all, if we want to hear God, we must be close to God to hear his voice. So you have to keep coming to him so you can hear his voice. Those who don't come to him, he doesn't speak to them. Because even if he does, you're not interested. So the second of all, if you want to hear his voice, his word must be filled inside of you. So he said earlier, that's why meditation is very important. With his word, he you can easily understand and he will speak to you. So you have to keep filling your life with his word. And you have to keep asking God to experience the word. So the third one. If you want to hear his voice, you have to get rid of the noise in your heart. So don't focus on the noise in your life. So just be humble and go before God. Then you can hear his voice. So you have to be humble. You shouldn't say, oh, I know already. So the knowledge that you know, so what did Peter say? So what you know, is there fish? So it's not in the deep, it's in the shallow. Where? So what about God? What did Jesus say? Go to cast your net in the deep water. So when you rely on his word, the spoken word, which is Rema, he obeyed and he gave the, he threw the net and then his net was filled with fish you know, in a place where usually there wasn't supposed to be fish there. So he called his other brothers over. So you have your earth thing, you have to be humble before him. So even Pastor Yom, when he went to Philippines, you should say at the end, and then you should proclaim. So at the end of the mission trip, 
so he proclaimed what God told him to say. Almost 1 a.m. in the morning when everyone was falling asleep, so he had to proclaim at that time. So he just proclaimed what the Holy Spirit told him to say. So they all went together, but they were like, oh, that happened, oh, that happened. You know, people started to ask him because they weren't interested. So even if they were there where God was working, they couldn't hear and they couldn't experience. So you have to clean your heart, deal with your heart. So the last thing, if you want to hear his voice, what God said the last time, you have to hurry up and go back and find what the last thing God said to you and obey it if you didn't obey it. So the last time God spoke to you, if you, after you didn't obey, you know, that word and God's going to stop speaking to you. Until when? Until you obey the last thing he told you and then you clear it. Okay. So you're listening very well. You, saw, you heard his voice very well, but suddenly you cannot hear his voice. Then you have to examine your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Sometimes there was one time where God spoke very clearly, but then I forgot about it or I didn't focus on it or I wasn't interested in it. You didn't think that his word was more important or something that you didn't want to do. It was different from what you wanted to do, so you didn't obey his word. Then God will be silent. So, do you want God to speak in your daily life or do you just want 450 years to pass by? So then follow that. So Lord Jesus, so being born again, so with the Father and me, so I'm supposed to, you know, give my heart and talk to you. So in that position, Jesus Christ, everything that was stuck, God got rid of, uh, Jesus got rid of everything. And then by the blood of Jesus, he restored this relationship with the Father. But I didn't believe in that truth. I doubted it. I disobeyed. Had two hearts. So I confess and repent for all of that. So Holy Spirit, help me. So according to how you spoke to me, according to your character, according to what is written in the Bible. So let me hear, see, and understand your words So lead me. So every day let my life let on in heaven and on earth as I live through me let the same things happen so teach me and lead me so make me be excited so let your power and authority and his abund exceedingly abundant blessing and love so through me who obeys your word let that flow through me so that many people can come before Jesus and get the assurance of salvation and the same as me let them belong to Jesus in his grace so please use me so in Jesus name I pray Amen Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. okay do you guys all understand